a couple days ago on the 15th. Uh, joining us on stage, center stage right there, greeting you all with a nice sea lion wave, that is Sumi. So yeah, as I was just saying, she's our current Sparky number seven. And the big guy over on stage right, that is Nico. Now, a cool thing about Nico, as he greets you all from that step, is anybody here with a seven-year-old human? Or here as a seven-year-old human? Okay, well, Nico, Subi, you are neither seven nor are you a human. Um, Nico is a seven-year-old sea lion. And seven-year-old sea lions and seven-year-old humans have one thing in common, uh, their attention span. So this training is entirely voluntary. And usually uh, shows last about eight minutes, because that's about as long as Nico will last. And as Nico is demonstrating right now, he is getting eye drops. A lot of these behaviors, like I was saying, are related to their health care. This is a way that we can have our animals take an active role in their own health care. Now, because we do these uh, every day, three times a day, we'll know right away if anything changes. Uh, some of the more impressive behaviors you'll see later on in the show are ways we use to judge their flexibility, their strength, their coordination. But a lot of the behaviors are a lot more simple. Uh, Subi was just demonstrating a whole body present where she'll hold very still and give the keeper a chance to look at her skin and fur or present a flipper like she just did now and look at the range of motion of her flippers. Now this training has a couple of components to make it successful. I mentioned that sea lions are very flexible, we have to check that out every day. Um, so, every behavior begins with a cue. And the cue is just a combination of a word that the, speaker, uh, the keeper say and a hand signal. <laughs> and that's how the animals know what behavior we're asking them to do next. And then you'll probably notice the clicking noise that goes on as the training continues. <laughs> that click is a signal that they've done the behavior they've been asked to do and that a reward is on the way. And you can see Nico right now working with a target that is a blue and white boy on the end of a stick. And that is how we will teach new behaviors. Uh, the very first behavior any animal in the entire zoo will learn is to basically approach and touch the target. And when they touch the target with their nose, uh, they will get a reward and they realize that we will build every behavior from that. We'll use that to shape other behaviors. So you're getting a look at two different stages of training, where I like to think of Nico as our second grader, and Subi is clearly in high school. Now, can any of you balance a ball on your nose like Subi's demonstrating right now? I'll tell you her secret. She actually has whiskers at the end of her snout called vibrissae that help her pick up vibrations in the water as she swims. And when she has a ball on her nose, it will tell her which way the ball is about to roll so she can continuously work to keep her head under it. So be as if we were bouncing a ball at our nose with our hands on either side. She's got to guess where the ball is going. <laughs> now, Subi is demonstrating their dexterity with flippers. So these are California sea lions. If you have seen a seal show, very frequently, uh, they're called seal shows, but you're actually seeing sea lions. As both Nico and Subi are demonstrating, sea lions on land can rotate their flippers under their body and use them like legs. They can even go in reverse, as Subi is showing us right now. That is different from seals. Seals have much shorter flippers, and they move like Subi's about to show us. So that uh, method I like to call flipping, they'll use their back flippers to propel themselves both through the water and on land. So to me, sea lions, like Subi and Nico, always kind of look like a bear wearing a onesie that's a size too small. And seals always look like a bear trying to kick a sleeping bag off their hind feet. Now, sea lions have to be very fast because they catch fish in their native habitat, but they also have to evade predators. So some of the behaviors, oh, Subi's giving you a hint what kind of predator she might have to evade in a while. <laughs> Getting to home. Sharks get a little too close to me. Uh, so yeah, that was her shark impression. Now in zoos, most animals are from other zoos and aquariums. That is a behavior called porpoising. 
We will use this training as a way to have them practice the kind of behaviors they need to survive in the wild. They don't necessarily need here. <laughs> I haven't, other than Subi, I haven't seen any real sharks in Como Harbor lately. So she really doesn't need to know how to park this. But it's useful for them to learn this kind of stuff because it'll help them practice the same kind of problem solving behaviors they need to survive in the wild. And it gives them mental stimulation, keeps them from getting bored. It's always something new for them to do. And so every training session will be different. So every time you see a Sparky show, you'll see them working on a different set of behaviors. Because if you did the same thing three times a day, every day of the week, then it gets to be routine and kind of boring. Now, my favorite thing about them is what I like to call pinniped popsicles. They get the ice that was in their uh, reward buckets. And if you watch them for a minute, they'll try check out all the ice that they got out of their buckets and then they'll switch and check out each other's buckets. Because they want to make sure the other's not getting anything better than they are. Oh, there we go. Right on time, the switch. So as we're wrapping up the show today, I have some homework for you all. I invite you to visit our other zoo exhibits and take a look around to see if you see any items like the ones we've used on stage here for these guys for their training. Because this type of training we do for all of our animals, from the Galapagos tortoise all the way up to the polar bears. And it's all for our animals' health care. In fact, we've gotten the polar bears to the point where they can very patiently offer us a paw and wait while we voluntarily ask them for a blood draw. So think of what your favorite behavior was in the show. And when you go home, and are talking to somebody about your zoo visit, tell them what your favorite behavior was. So does everybody remember what we call this type of training? I said there'd be a quiz. Oh, I heard, I heard an operant, so somebody was taking notes. Yeah, operant conditioning with positive reinforcement. Now, we are a publicly funded institution. That means we rely on donations, and this Sparky Show is the result of a generous donation from the Spire Credit Union. But one way you can help us out is by advocating for us in your community and telling your friends about our message about our animals' welfare. And that's exactly what I was suggesting you do when you go home and tell them what your favorite behavior today was. So if you have any questions, feel free to come on up to the class and ask any questions you have about the show.